Hey everybody, welcome back to the Blockware Intelligence YouTube channel. Today we're going to be continuing with our on-chain analysis tutorial series. Today talking about SOPR. SOPR is a metric that uh, I'm sure you've seen many people posting on Twitter, in the newsletter, or maybe in my, my talks with Pomp or whoever else about uh, market structure. So we're going to dive into what is SOPR, how is it calculated, as well as how to kind of apply that in your analysis moving forward. Uh, before we get started, I would really appreciate if you could smash the like and subscribe button, uh, as well as comment below any feedback on this video and any suggestions for future content that you'd like to see covered uh, between on-chain derivatives. We also have our mining tutorial series and our recently launched technical analysis series with our crypto uh, equity analyst, Blake Davis. So let us know what other videos you'd like uh, to see. So let's go ahead and dive in. Again, today we're going to be talking about SOPR. Uh, SOPR is a metric created by on-chain analyst Renato Shirakashi, a really cool last name, <laughs> in April of 2019. Uh, SOPR is deeply embedded in market psychology, and it highlights the reaction to participants being in a state of profit and loss. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a moment. Uh, SOPR can be used to gauge the profitability of market participants in aggregate by comparing current trading market price to participants' cost basis price. So how is SOPR calculated? So SOPR is calculated by taking the realized price divided by the value of creation using on-chain analytics. And that's where SOPR comes from. So SOPR stands for spent output profit ratio. So we're comparing the price at the time that the coins were initially moved to the price that they're now moved. Uh, and of course, we're assuming buying and selling through those, those two actions. So in layman's terms, we're dividing price sold divided by price paid. When SOPR is above one, participants are in a state of profit. And when SOPR is below one, participants are in a state of loss. So with that being said, we talked about how to define SOPR. So how do we apply it? SOPR can be used, again, to kind of gauge when bullish or bearish trends are forming. Uh, in bull markets, SOPR retests one, of course, from the, from the you know, above side, um, retests it as support. Uh, and so what that's telling you is that it's retesting the cost basis of market participants. And buying along the one value during bull markets is a good dip buying opportunity. In bear markets, SOPR retesting one from the underside provides good opportunities to de-risk. And again, when we think about it, this is deeply embedded in kind of human market psychology. Um, when you know it's a raging bull market, people really don't want to sell at a loss. Uh, and so whenever we kind of retest their cost basis, they tend to kind of stop selling for a moment, right? And that allows us to kind of get that breath to, to continue pushing higher. Um, in a bear market, especially newer market participants that are perhaps you know, uh, in the market just because Bitcoin was only going up during the bull market, Maybe they don't have any kind of fundamental understanding of the value proposition of Bitcoin. Uh, when we are in a bear market and you're declining 50 to 75% in a bear market, um, whenever we kind of retest their cost basis, they may say, hey, look, I just want to get out of this. I'm going to take my money, uh, you know, break even and just get out, right? And so that's why we see uh, SOPR kind of get re rejected oftentimes off of the first initial retests of one from the underside um, because it's retesting that, that cost basis. The broader, uh, the broader trend you want to follow, the higher the moving average you can apply to SOPR. So we can look at just the daily value of SOPR for short-term you know, kind of price action. We can also look at the seven-day moving average, the 14-day moving average, the 30-day moving average, and even, even as far out as the 90-day moving average. So here's the chart of SOPR. Uh, this is just the complete vanilla uh, version of SOPR. We'll look at a couple you know, more nuanced versions of it in the next few slides. Uh, this is just a very basic uh, metric. So what we can see is that, you know, in the bear market in 2015, it rejected from the underside several times. Once SOPR reclaimed that one threshold, which is that black line on the screen, that's, that's where the ratio reaches a point of one. Whenever we reclaim that, or when Bitcoin reclaimed that uh, at the end of 2015, heading into early 2016, that kind of showed you that the momentum in the market was coming back. Uh, and then SOPR flipped from resistance to support. Uh, and it did so several times into 2017, all the way up into the top. Uh, once SOPR kind of broke below one, you saw it never really was able to hold that, that one value again as support. 
but once it did uh, at the beginning of 2019, that was again uh, a sign of momentum reclaim in the market, and um, that you know it preceded the push up to 14k from the from the $3,000 lows at the end of 2018. We can see as well, uh, couldn't really find any footing throughout late 2019 into early 2020, uh, but kind of towards the middle end of, of uh, 2020, we had this really clean retest of one, as you can see, right after September of 2020. Uh, and that, that kind of, you know, re reset and, and uh, retest of, of SOPR as SOPR, the one value as a support, allowed us to push higher into the end of 2020 into the main phase of the bull market. As you can see, again, we broke below um, in 2021, uh, in, in May of 2021, uh, retested this from the underside, got rejected, broke through finally, and then had a really clean retest of this as support at the end of September of last year on that retest of 40K before the push back to, to all-time highs at the end of 2021. Um, and as a recent, you can see we've actually just flipped this as support, which is a good sign of kind of early momentum reclaim. Next, we're looking at adjusted SOPR. So this is the same thing, except we're filtering out all the outputs below one hour. Uh, so essentially, we're kind of filtering out some of that noise of transactions that are just you know occurring throughout a, a you know less than one hour period. Uh, so again, it's just kind of a little bit of noise filtering. I'm not going to walk through the the whole chart because it's essentially the the same thing, just a bit more clean. And then lastly, we can apply some of Glassnode's entity clustering heuristics. We can look at the just general entity adjusted version of SOPR, uh, but we can also look at in a bit more granularity, the short-term holder SOPR as well as long-term holder SOPR. So I've just thrown up just to, to just show the short-term holder version uh, for the slideshow. And as you can see, again, it, uh, you see these clean kind of underside retests during the bear market, you see you know, um, early to mid 2015, once this kind of flipped as support, that allowed us to move higher into, into the main kind of bull market phase of 2017. Once it was broken below heading into 2018, it served as resistance four times before that capitulation down to 3K. Flipped it as support, allowed us to move back in, up into that kind of mini bull market up to 14K in 2019. Uh, once it found footing again in, in 2020, that same area that we looked at with kind of the vanilla and adjusted versions of SOPR in uh, September 2021, that clean retest allowed us to push higher. You see the same retest we just talked about in September of 2021 as well, uh, which allowed us to push higher into all-time highs. Uh, and we still haven't quite reclaimed uh, that kind of one threshold yet. Uh, so again, this is the 30-day the moving average. Uh, and these, I'm, I'm looking at the 14-day. Again, you can look at the you know the version with no moving averages whatsoever on on kind of a shorter term you know basis. But for the type of analytics that that I like to look at, uh, you know, kind of on that that more kind of intermediate term basis, I think you know applying the the seven, fourteen, and, and thirty day moving averages are are kind of uh, the the best way to go in my opinion. So with that being said, uh, we'll kind of wrap this up here. I know this was a, a somewhat quick video, uh, kind of wanted to get straight to the point here. Um, so SOPR can be used to gauge when bullish bearish trends are forming by looking at the profitability of investors. In bull markets, SOPR retests one, meaning it retests the cost basis of market participants and buying along the one value is a good dip buying opportunity in bull markets. In bear markets, SOPR retests one from the underside, providing good de-risking opportunities. The broader the trend you want to follow, the higher the moving average you can apply to SOPR. Uh, with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you got something out of it. I, you know, this is a, a good kind of place to start with SOPR. Maybe you know, cleared up any questions you had about uh, what it means and how you can apply it. Uh, again, uh, you know, let me know any feedback you have on this video and other metrics uh, you'd like to see covered moving forward. Hope you guys have a great day and uh, I'll see you out there on Twitter. <laughs> Take it easy.